I would like to call the Monday, April 22nd, 2024, South St. Paul School Board meeting to order. Uh, Lisa, can you please call the roll? Director Human. Here. Weber. Here. W. Felton. Here. Claflin. Here. Laliberti. Here. T. Felton. Here. And Chair Rush. Here. That's seven present. Excellent. If we could rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. <coughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I will ask for a motion to approve our meeting agenda for this evening as well as the work session and regular meeting from February 26, 2024, work session and regular meeting minutes from March 25th, 2024, and the work session minutes from April 8th, 2024. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? And with that, the motion carries. All right, tonight is going to be a little bit briefer of one of our board meetings as we're having to shift a couple things around towards the end of the school year. Um, we will not have our normal quality in action tonight, um, but we've got a couple things coming from that department. Brian, do you wanna kinda highlight what is to come? Sure, yeah, you know, we've been working on um, what we call our pathway to Packer Promise, and so, a while back, we discussed the, the you know, International Baccalaureate program and where that fit or maybe didn't necessarily fit within the organization. And so this year, it was decided that we would sunset the PYP, the primary years program, and the middle years program. Uh, but with any you know, lovely sunset, there should be a beautiful sunrise. And so we've been spending this year engaging with stakeholders. So uh, Amy Winter, who's our Executive Director of Educational Services, has facilitated uh, meetings with a parent advisory group. We've met with students at the middle school and high school, interviewing hundreds of students about their experiences and what they're hoping. We had a staff work group, and so it's all starting to come to fruition, especially feeling it right now as our high schoolers and middle schoolers, but in particular uh, high school, are, are doing their registration. So uh, one of the things with the um, IB program, it's a strong program, but it really dictates what you do, and we were starting to find misalignment in the direction we wanted to go as a district and what we were made to kind of do through IB. And so now we've kind of been able to peel that back and say, where, what do we want to do? What do we want to accomplish? Who are we and where do we want to get to? And so it's been really great. Like, again, the feedback has been um, positive but candid. Our, our students shared with us they didn't have a lot of a uh, good understanding of how they were choosing courses, for example. And so uh, that pushed on us to, to think about our counseling and advising of them. With the MYP program at the secondary, all the classes had to be year long, which forced classes to be, for example, every other day between art and PE. And so now that we've peeled that back, they have a trimester schedule. They're able to look at the courses that are offered and offer them in a completely different sequence. So I'll just give one example, not to give it all away, because I know Amy will come and share more, but uh, we heard loudly and clearly, and we've heard it since I came here, people, there's an interest in the trades. And so uh, Principal Ochaki worked with a very creative teacher, um, Mr. Judd there to come up with a class to gear towards uh, the trades. And we now have uh, 174 requests for that class next year at the secondary. Oh, wow. Yeah, so that's just one example, but we have pathways that are gonna be medical and trades and other things that are gonna just give lots of opportunities. Middle school is gonna be a, a, a time and a space for exploration. And then at elementary, really igniting that passion in our kids that we know is, is, is really there, but when we build a bright uh, horizon for them that they can aspire to. So really excited, it's built a lot of energy and enthusiasm. Uh, with our teaching staff and with the families who've been engaged with that work and so again we'll go more into detail when, when amy is able to join us but um, we'll be communicating uh, more broadly about that to uh, our internal community within our families and staff but also in the six times so the whole community can hear all the amazing things uh, we've got going on we are a small but mighty district that is on the move so <laughs> i'm kind of get some chicken skin when i talk yep. about it here yeah 
Well, and we've been engaged in a lot of very transformative work this year, um, whether that's desired daily experience, whether that's the common core values with the city. Um, and I know people are eager for that information, so I am very excited for us to start rolling all of this out and um, what this will bring for our students in our community. So it's going to be fun. Excellent. All right, um, this week um, we do not have any public listening submissions at this time. Um, one can always make public listening submissions either through our website at any time from home um, or uh, our work sessions. You can come at 6.30 um, in the district office and do those in person to the board as a whole. Um, and I will turn this over to Ann Claflin to give us an update on a wealth of things we have been talking through and working through um, in our last two work sessions. Yes, uh, the past two work sessions have been um, very productive for us. Um, I'll again say that the change in the structure of our meetings has led to some great conversations and uh, gives us some longer um, discussions rather than having to always jump from meeting right onto this one. Um, so the first uh, meeting of the month, always uh, on the second Monday of the month, so this was April 8th, we had a work session at the district offices and uh, <coughs> we started off with a report from uh, Joel Miltier about HR issues and at this time of year that we'd be seeing a lot of um, formalities coming through the board agendas on uh, probationary teachers, um, staffing agreements that are being changed, uh, how teachers can reapply for positions if their limited position is um, not continued, but um, just giving us an overview of how that HR process works. That was followed up by a discussion led by um, Amy Winter, Dr. Winter, um, about our response to the American Indian Parent Advisory Committee on their non-concurrence. And for this, you're going to have to cast your memory back to late February when we received that vote of non-concurrence from the American Indian Parent Advisory Council. And in that vote of non-concurrence, they raised a number of issues um, concerning funding, staffing, support that our Native American Indian students were getting. And since that end of February, a lot of work has been done within the district. Uh, Leslie Gamez and Courtney Renville Soto as our assistant director of um, educational services. I think that was the correct title. And uh, Courtney Renville Soto as our liaison um, worked with staff to come up with uh, ways that we could address the concerns that were brought to us. Um, a lot of the concerns have already been um, addressed or have been in the process of making improvements over the past year. Um, our technology team has done a lot of work to improve our data collection processes so we are able to maintain um, accurate data about our students that lets us track um, and make sure that we are providing the services necessary to students who need those and are um, and deserving of receiving all the supports that we offer to our students. Um, between the projects that the district has begun offering more social service and social work support to our students, there's been um, an increase in availability of these services to all of our students as well. Um, there was some more um, discussion of that today. I'll get to what happened in our most recent work session <laughs> in a few minutes. It's just so much that we'd accomplished. Um, also, two weeks ago, we received department updates uh, from a number of different uh, departments within the district. Um, Dr. Winter gave us quite a bit of information about the classroom walkthroughs that had been conducted where staff and leaders have been able to observe in the classroom what has been going on. Um, 
we received the reminder that the MCA testing that um, has now already begun and for some of our students already concluded, some of our students still have some testing ahead of them, that those tests are really to evaluate the system and not to evaluate any individual, that there are better ways that we can um, track individual measures with goal setting and individual testing, that those are better measures for um, the individual students and we're looking at our whole system here with the MCA results that we'll be getting uh, likely over the summer. Our finance and long range financial planning committee had met just before the work session and we received an update at that work session about the budget um, and the challenges that we have ahead of us to continue to find some places to make uh, savings within our budget, but um, mm. we are overall in a rather good position. Um, we are able to keep delivering on that Packer promise um, and give our students all the supports that are necessary. There are some changes that are going to be put in place in the next school year where in elementary world language we'll be shifting to a STEM um, focus. Um, and there's going to be some more staff also added to help address um, issues that our most marginalized students are facing, uh, especially students in special ed and our multilingual learners. And our finance committee had concluded the discussion just so grateful that we're able to avoid some of these really severe cutbacks that other districts are facing uh, because we have such great support from our community um, and our community voted to increase our operating levy um, recently. So uh, that has left us in a really good financial position, but we still do need to talk about making sure that our district is appropriately staffed and um, that our resources are allocated based on our students' needs. Uh, there's always difficult decisions to make there. Um, in order to make some of those decisions, there's a community task force that is going to um, start up very shortly and we're looking for 25 to 30 members from across the community, a very broad range of uh, membership where you will have an opportunity to tell us what the community supports for long range facility planning for the school district. Um, those meetings will be held over the course of the summer and um, we are looking for people to apply to join this uh, task force on facilities. You can apply on the school board website. There is a link under the news section. Um, and for folks that may not have internet or feel as comfortable applying online, there will be some paper copies of that application available at the Senior Center. Um, <laughs> HR had also given an update on how successful the in-person and virtual job fairs have been at hiring uh, staff, making connections. Um, they had already done quite a few interviews from those in-person and virtual job fairs. The naming committee had been um, formed, and I, I don't know that they had met pre prior to our last meeting, but we'll be receiving updates from that naming committee um, to share um, ideas about renaming the stadium or sports area near the high school. Student rep positions are open for the next year. Um, the board will also be conducting a board evaluation of how we are functioning. We began some of that work with just understanding where we think we are at as a board. Um, and then wrapped up the work session two weeks ago with a closed session on the principals. Um, contract negotiations. And that was just the last meeting. We also had, <laughs> but you can understand why the longer meeting sessions are so useful for us to get through so many longer topics. Uh, today we had a shorter work session where we presented our response to the American Indian Parent Advisory Council. Uh, Leslie Gamez and Courtney Renville Soto were here to present that information to the board. Um, 
and then also members of that committee were present. They had given a lot of information to us about how um, the improvements were being made to our data practices process. Uh, the social workers in the schools are um, being given all the connections that they need to work closely with this group of students, um, that we have made changes already to how we can advocate for those students um, in disciplinary issues, give them um, additional support. Um, quite a few things that have been um, already suggested to the district, followed through on, um, and it was made very clear to all of us that in the past, uh, the information that we were receiving as board members about the success of our American Indian students was not um, being accurately portrayed because we did not have accurate data. And um, that we are all making an effort moving forward to recognize the, um, the lack of information that we had and improve our understanding of the situation moving forward. Um, making sure that we can identify and provide services to all the students in our district as they're needed. Um, and we hope that this will lead to more of a ongoing collaborative working environment where we're able to address these situations as they come up um, and solve the types of issues that we have identified through uh, this uh, non-concurrence that was presented to us. So we've all signed the response that will be submitted to the APAC and the Minnesota Department of Education. Um, and finally, tonight we had a few more short discussions about committee updates and uh, had another closed session to discuss our principal's contract tentative agreement, which will be coming up later tonight. So I think that has gotten us through all of the board work <laughs> it, that has been done in work sessions. <laughs> Not a Did anyone have anything <laughs> else to <laughs> add? That was a marathon <laughs> session. That is right. uh, not a small amount of stuff that we have been working through. Um, but I will turn this over to Superintendent Zambrino for some highlights from around the district. Yeah, great. Lo clearly lots going on around here, which is fun. It's an exciting place to be. Um, as uh, Director Claflin just mentioned, we are uh, working our way through the MCAs, and I appreciate that perspective, that it is a good measure of the system. It's not a great measure at the individual student level, nor should anyone ever think uh, that one assessment it would be a way you could sum up a student's uh, performance or experience. However, uh, we do want our students to perform well on those, and so that's why our teachers work so hard uh, to teach them high academic standards and that way the kids can perform their best. Uh, for those who haven't been involved in, in delivering the MCA test, it's a lot of work. And understandably, there's a lot of security protocols and things and compliance for the Department of Education. So just want to say, you know, shout out to our teachers, administrators, other staff who are supporting that, the office staff, others. A uh, huge undertaking. The grades three through eight take math and reading, and then 10th grade takes reading, 11th grade does math. So we're kind of through that reading into the math right now. And then over the next few weeks, fifth grade, eighth grade, and at one grade level, they take the MCA science. So excited to see how our students perform on that. I know that no matter what, the, the rigor we've seen this year in our classrooms has been very high. So hopefully we'll see that pay off on those MCAs, but we'll see when, uh, when the results are released. Uh, we talked about this a little bit in our work session, but we are working on a facilities task force, so we're uh, hopefully going to get a little more interest. We've definitely had some people sign up, but we're looking for staff, families, and anyone uh, in the community who'd be interested in joining our facilities task force. And the goal is to build sh uh, short and long-term plans around how we're using our buildings, the health and safety of our buildings. And so it's not a huge ask. We've scheduled six meetings. They uh, may not all be needed, but we will, uh, really want, again, you heard the, that spirit of stakeholder engagement we're working on. And I've been here last month was just a two year mark and we've done some things around our facilities, but we haven't had enough chance to really dig deep. And so that's what we're looking to do with this task force. 
We did hear from our American Indian Education um, APAC and our, our staff, our liaison today, uh, excited to share that there's a powwow, uh, Healing in Four Directions, which will be on April 28th from 12 to 7 at Humboldt Senior High. So our American Indian Ed program is partnering with other districts in the area. So there's native dance, drum performances, of course, food and other vendors. Uh, and then there's a grand entry at one. If you've never been to a powwow, it's very powerful to see the grand entry. Uh, and then the feast is at six. So hopefully we'll see some folks there. All right, some other highlights around the district. This one's pretty fun, I think, for uh, for the group here, at least one individual at the table here. We had the Athena Award Banquet. I uh, got to, right? We can do that, right? Yeah. Woo. Yeah. Always an exciting moment to celebrate, you know, any opportunity to celebrate our kids. But the Athena Award goes to one outstanding female senior athlete uh, for their academics and athletics. Uh, this year's winner was Annie Felton, and she is a three-season athlete, so all year round, tennis in the fall, hockey in the winter, and then golf in the spring. Uh, I got to join uh, Tim, uh, Director Felton, and his family. Uh, really fun event. I always say, like, I walk out of there feeling like, wow, I must have wasted my high school experience because those young ladies are <laughs> impressive, the list of accomplishments they have. And uh, what's fun being in a small district, you do get to know the kids. I haven't gotten to know Annie as well as I'd like, but I'll t tell you, she's a funny kid with a strong drive around her academics and athletics, so she is sure to go far. So congratulations. Um, fun thing, I also got to sit in on this. So. Um, we had a visit from the National Energy Foundation. They have a Think Energy program. They visited our, our physics classes, and so students learned about renewable energy and just how some simple switches can really save or conserve energy. Um, they also got a kit to bring home uh, that had solar-powered cell phone chargers. So that's pretty cool. A smart power strip. I hadn't seen those where you plug in different devices and it knows how to not make them draw energy when you're not using them. So like your TV and your stereo and things like that. They learned about LED bulbs and just even how much energy is wasted in showers. And so just that low uh, flow shower head. So kind of neat to see some real life applications coming together in our classroom there. This is always fun, the CLC photo contest. So the CLC students went to the Minnesota Zoo, uh, participated in their photo challenge, and there were six areas of the zoo they could take pictures from. They had 33 submissions and eight finalists chosen. Uh, more than 200 uh, social media followers voted on their favorite photo, and the winner was Yahir in the zoo's Tropics Trail. I looked at that picture thing, and he looks very relaxed, but he does look very dangerous at the same time. <laughs> so. Cool picture, so congratulations to you here, and, and of course all of our CLC students who participated in that. We were talking about spring earlier, and what a windy spring. So I guess it was fitting that Lincoln Center uh, had their first graders learning about wind and weather. So they took advantage of the breezy days to test out some experiments. So they made wind socks and windmill, or pinwheels and wind socks, and uh, had to make some predictions, some hypotheses around what would need the most force to move and got to go outside and do some some real engaging hands-on learning so at least there's one good use for all the wind <laughs> that i think is blowing all of our siding and roofs off right now and then Kaposia, a little highlight there so they uh their pta participated in the state pta's reflections competition and so uh, each year they host a competition this year um the theme was I am hopeful because, and so there were six categories, visual art, creative writing, original choreography, music, uh, composition, photography, and film. So Avery's visual arts piece, Love and Lila's dance choreography piece, Here Comes the Sun, received honorable mention, and Felix's photograph of American flag won the photography category. So congratulations to them and thanks to our PTA for getting connected out at the state level. Uh, some dates to just mark on the calendar. We have no school on the 26th of this month and then May 24th and 27th, so you can mark calendars there. Uh, the Apex, that's such a fun thing to get to do, the fundraiser coming up at Kaposia. So the fun run is on the 23rd, but they'll start their fundraising <clears throat> on the 13th. And then Lincoln has their spring picture day on the 23rd coming up. A reminder, the Secondary Student Family Connect is on the 25th, so coming right up here from 4 to 8th, and then prom already on uh, this weekend, so I know that's a, a fun night. 
Ed Foundation Scholarship Program, May 8th at 6 o'clock. I'm telling you, it's unbelievable. We say this every year, but uh, 475,000 plus in scholarships this year to our students. So unbelievable. And we also get another theater production coming up of Puffs from May 17th to 19th. And so they do that Friday through Sunday. I know those are always very well attended and very popular. And then on May 1st, we have the Activities and Athletics Awards Banquet, another event that's just so fun to see all the things our kids have accomplished in their time. Uh, because there's always, anytime we celebrate athletics and activities, it's always married with celebrating their academics. And so I look forward to all of these events and celebrating the amazing things our, our kids are doing. As always, you can find our materials online and track all the things that Director Claflin was talking about. They're all there for, for anybody to catch up. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you. A lot of things going on. All right. Up next on our agenda is our consent agenda items, which are financial claims, staffing, and personnel in nature, and have been presented as a part of the board packet. At this time, I'm looking for a motion to approve our consent agenda. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? With that, the motion passes. Um, our policy um, review is in two parts tonight. Um, we have a wealth of policies that are under review for their third and final reading. Um, so we will be um, voting or uh, asking for approval of um, policies around emergency closing of schools, mandate reporting and child neglect, uh, mandate reporter reporting and maltreatment of vulnerable adults, workload limits and criterion for special education teachers, instructional services, um, basic standard testing and accommodations, modifications and exemptions, um, the Read to Ensure Academic Development Act, or also known as the Read Act, and use of school district facilities and equipment. So up first, I am looking for a approval um, of those policies. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? That the motion carries. We have several other policies that are up for their first of three readings that are available in our board packet. Um, the first is around discipline, suspension, and dismissal of school district employees. Second is employee background checks then harassment and violence, then graduation requirements and acceptance of gifts. Um, if you want to be able to see those at greater length, you can review those in our board packet. Um, but the policy committee has been very busy as we are making our way through our cycle. And next, that brings us to our business items. Um, up first. I am looking for approval for the South St. Paul School Board to approve the resolution relating to the non-renewal of limited contract long-term substitute teachers. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. And for discussion, I turn this over to Joel Miltier. Great. Thank you. In compliance with Minnesota statutes, we're required to terminate the teaching contracts of the district's long-term limited contract substitute teachers at the end of each school year. A long-term substitute by definition is one who worked all or part of the school year replacing a specific teacher who has returned rights to his or her position. The contracts of the long-term substitutes must be terminated at the end of the school year. Failure to terminate these contracts could result in the district allocating two teachers in each affected position as the regular teachers exercise their right to return from leave. Attached as a resolution to non-renew the teaching contracts of the district's long-term limited contract substitute teachers. Excellent. Any discussion or questions? Uh, Lisa, will you please call the roll? Director Human? Yes. Director Weber? Yes. W. Felton? <coughs> yes. Claflin? Yes. Laliberti? Yes. T. Felton? Yes. And Chair Rush? Yes. At seven yeas? Thank you. Stay close, Joel. Uh, <laughs> up next, I'm looking for approval for the South St. Paul School Board to approve the resolution relating to the non-renewal of probationary teachers. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. 
and discussion goes back to you, Joel. Thank you. As we continue to work through our staffing for the 24-25 school year, we do have a couple of additional names that we need to bring before the board tonight for non-renewal. Uh, as a reminder, we must release a number of probationary teachers for various reasons, including student-driven scheduling, changes in enrollment, budget reductions, curriculum changes, licensure issues, mid-year placements, and performance issues. Attached is a resolution, a resolution to terminate the contracts of two probationary teachers. This resolution terminates these teaching contracts for those listed at the end of the current 23-24 school year with non-renewal for the 24-25 school year. Any discussion or questions? Much like the last, resolutions require a roll call vote. Lisa, will you again please call the roll? Director Weber? Yes. W. Felton? Yes. Claflin? Yes. Laliberti? Yes. T. Felton? Yes. Human? Yes. And Chair Rush? Yes. Seven yeas. Thank you. Up next, I am looking for approval for the South St. Paul School Board to approve the resolution for discontinuance of positions and or programs. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Discussion comes back to you, Joel. Thank you. The district is proposing a resolution for the discontinuance of educational programs and positions to align staffing with projected enrollment for the 24-25 school year. The district will discontinue the following positions and or programs, the K-12 instructional coordinator and world language at the elementary schools. As we continue to work through our staffing planning for 24-25 school year, there may be some additional need to bring further reductions to the board later this spring to ensure we are being fiscally responsible while working to maintain low class sizes for students. We're asking the board to approve this resolution for the above noted position eliminations and reductions for the 24-25 school year. Any questions or discussion? I think it's worth pointing out that a lot of this is the change from um, world languages in our elementary schools to science. So this is a positive change for our students that we look forward to seeing. Appreciate you highlighting that. This has certainly been a source of um, some significant discussion at the board and um, so much of this is related to the direction that we are mm -hmm. starting to carry our um, school going forward. Um, Lisa, will you please call a roll call vote? Uh, w. Felton? Yes. Claflin? Yes. Laliberti? Yes. Felton? Yes. Human? Yes. Weber? Yes. And Chair Rush? Yes. That's seven yeas. Thank you. Up next, I'm looking for approval for the South St. Paul School Board to approve the agreement with South St. Paul's Principals Association Local Collective Bargaining Agreement. That was a mouthful um, for the contract period of July 1st, 2023 to June 30th, 2025. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Joel, you are still on deck. I'm still here. <laughs> It's with great pleasure that I bring before you tonight the tentative agreement for the Principals Association that we reached last week with them for the next cycle, which is the 2023-2025 contract cycle. I just want to take a minute to recognize our principals and assistant principals in the district who work tirelessly on a daily basis to provide leadership and direction to their staff and to the families of our school district and are there for our students and support them day in and day out. They're just a great group of people who really do work hard every day for our staff and our students and their families. So I just wanted to take that minute to recognize them. Um, the proposed agreement is within the parameters established by the school board. The components of the settlement have been provided to the school board and the bargaining unit has voted in favor of this settlement. The agreement includes the increases to step schedules of a 4% increase in year one, a 3% increase in year two, market adjustments for each of the principal classifications to align our salaries with the median market salaries for principals, an increase to the district's 403B contribution beginning in year two of the contract, and increases to longevity pay after completion of specified years of service to the district. It's our recommendation that the school board approve this contract for the 23-25 cycle for the principals association. Any questions or discussion? I also just want to acknowledge uh, yours and Brady's uh, process for working our way through these negotiating season um, as we make our way through each of the bargaining groups and contracts and um, appreciate your really collaborative and open approach um, with the board and with the bargaining groups that you are working with. Um, 
I, I enjoy being a part of a district that is not some of the contentious headlines we see elsewhere. Um, and so that that is not easy work, and uh, pr I know the board appreciates the work that the two of you are doing. Um, <coughs> all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? And with that, the motion carries. Thank you so much. Thank you. Joel, you're free. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Up next, looking for approval for the South St. Paul School Board to approve the acceptance of gifts report. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. And for discussion, I return this over to Brady Hoffman. Good evening. We have three donations tonight on the agenda. Uh, two of those are from the South St. Paul Open Foundation for the volleyball program and the girls hockey program for coaching salaries. And then we have a donation from the South St. Paul Education Foundation for the Kaposia Ninja Warrior uh, for some equipment for that Ninja Warrior course. So uh, grateful for the support uh, that our district continues to receive from these organizations. That Ninja Warrior program is also a <laughs> tremendous amount of fun every anytime we get to hear about that. Any further questions or discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? With that, the motion carries. Thank you so much. Well, this made rapid work of our board meeting tonight. I'm going to turn to board members to provide an update on some of their committee work um, and where they have seen a passion inside of our district. Uh, Monica Weber, why don't you kick it off? Um. So District um, 917, for which is the intermediate district that I serve as the board liaison, um, going through kind of typical end of year board things. They have lots of different graduation ceremonies um, that are coming up, um, approved the school calendar for the next couple years, policies. I know we're working on the budget, as all school districts are this time of year. Um, so exciting things happening at 917. And then on the Association of Metropolitan School Districts, um, the legislature is going to rapidly be coming to an end. And so I know both the House and the Senate have their um, their omnibus education bills. We'll see when they get together um, what potential changes. I know more funding to help support the READ Act that the legislature passed last year um, is going to be included, which I know will greatly help lots of districts in the um, unexpected costs of implementing that new legislation, um, along with some interesting um, pilot ideas um, to help encourage more um, teachers of color to come into the profession. Um, and or and um, providing some support for um, student teachers um, because as people may or may not know um, all teachers are required to do a 16 week um, practicum or in classroom every day in order to get their Minnesota teaching license and that is frequently not only is it not paid they have to pay their school for the credits in order to complete their licensure program through their university so I know the state is looking at ways to make that um, at least a little more cost neutral if not such a detrimental cost um, to new teachers that we want to encourage into our system. Excellent. Thank you. Nikki Lollibert. I have nothing at this time. All right. Ann Claflin. The local issues um, committee will meet Wednesday morning, April 24th, 8 a.m. at Central Square. This is uh, organized by the De uh, Chamber of Commerce and uh, includes folks representing um, private businesses, city, school district, nonprofits throughout our community. Um, and I was out of town for the last one, so I don't have any updates on that. But we'll bring back updates of everything going on in town at the next meeting. Excellent. Tim Felton. Um, nothing to add other than thanking Superintendent Zambrino for the kind words on Annie Felton. That was very nice. And uh, Brady Kruger, Activities Director, Coach Dave Palmquist, Coach Rebecca Spragel, who were all there. And it's in no short or small measure that she got that because due to the wonderful teachers and staff and coaches at South St. Paul. So thank you. Big round of applause for all of them. Yes. <clears throat> Wendy Felton. 
Yeah, I just want to add one more thing as we were congratulating and thanking our, our staff. Coming up two weeks from today, on Monday, May 6th, is, t is Teacher Appreciation Week. So we will be sure to be extending our thanks and gratitude to our staff members during Teacher Appreciation Week. And also, as I serve on the Education Foundation as our board rep, one thing that we just brought up this past meeting, coming up on Thursday, November 7th, granted it's several months away, it will be our gala that we will be planning, just starting to get the committee started on that. So we're looking forward to planning that again. And then also, um, I will be volunteering on Stride for Packer Pride, which the Schultz family has been doing this several, several times. If you like to jog, you can, adults, even kids, can do a little running on this. This is a major fundraiser that, that can be provided for our students in the athletic events, which will be held on Saturday, May 18th. And you can go on their website, Stride for Packer Pride, if you would like to sign up to be a runner. You can donate some money to this program, or if you're interested in being a volunteer, which I will be um, helping them out again. So looking forward to that. Stride for Packer Pride, May 18th. And then also, as I serve on the Senior Center Board of Directors, next week on Wednesday, May 1st, is our spring fashion show. So if you're interested in coming to the fashion show, which is a lot of fun, I am a model there. I've been doing it for <laughs> several years. It's a lot of fun. And there is a catered luncheon there, which is by the coop. And there is a $20 fee, which helps pay f for the luncheon. And there's many oppor opportunities if you, uh, like they have some drawings for, for prizes that you, you can buy a ticket for that if you'd like. So next week at Central Square, you can contact the staff there and to get signed up for the fashion show. It is a lot of fun. You can contact Linda Jacobs Buse to reserve your ticket. So it's, it's wonderful to do. Thank you. Excellent. Kim Human. Uh, community education met on Tuesday, April 9th. Unfortunately, we didn't have a quorum, but we had a really great conversation about what the goals are for the committee and how we get more people engaged in the work that we're doing. Uh, so shout out to South St. Paul residents who are on the committee because we are the most represented community of the Tri-District. Um, and so we want to fix that. We want it to be equal. So we had a really great discussion about how do we get more people from our 196 and 197 neighbors involved. Community education is something I'm really excited about it. I love how uh, Gene Zender always says it's from birth to earth. So I think everyone in our community has an opinion on community ed. It's from early childhood education and even those classes that new parents get from birth and the cute onesies that the district sends out all the way to the senior programming like the fashion show coming up. So I just hope that uh, our residents appreciate the work that's being done, but if they have any comments or concerns about community ed and how it can better serve them, the uh, Tri-District is happy to hear those comments and are looking at ways that we can better take in that information and respond to it. Excellent, okay. All right, um, want to take a moment to um, first thank Lisa Brandecker for helping facilitate our naming committee sort of ongoing process. Um, that is a big lift um, to sort of execute and get across the ground. Um, that'll lead to some further um, board discussions coming up, but that is not a small effort and really want to acknowledge and appreciate your engagement with our community as we go through. Um, it has been highlighted a couple times tonight, but we really want our community engaged and involved in our facilities task force. If you 
you are interested in um, sharing your own thoughts or learning more information about our school facilities inside of our community, um, please go to the district website um, under the news and information section. There is a clear, big, bold link for you to click on, and we are looking for some additional community support to kind of help us get a direction as we go through. And with no other further items tonight, um, I am looking for a motion um, to adjourn tonight's meeting. So moved. Second. All in favor? Or any discussion? <laughs> Anyone want to hold it off? <laughs> uh, all right. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? That the motion carries. Tonight's meeting is adjourned at 645. Have a great week, everyone. I just